I just wanted to do a quick video because we get a lot of questions on compression and how to do it right, how it's done wrong, and why is it important. Um, first thing is compression. Compression basically helps compact the clays around the sands and the aggregates that are in the plaster and help to solidify the surface so that it has a stronger feel and is less likely to dust. When it's done correctly, it's beautiful. When it's done wrong, you might as well not have compressed at all. All right, so now I want to talk about some of the ways that will make compression easier depending on the type of finish that you're doing. The first is what I call smoothing or taking a trowel when the plaster gets the leather hard and you use it to smooth out the surface. Uh, a lot of people call that leather hard compression and I've, I've switched the terminology because people would assume that with leather hard compression you don't need to wet it and rework it the following day when in reality you still need to do the final compression. The smoothing will only even out the surface, take out of all of the trial marks that might be there, and make it easier to do a smooth compression. The other thing to do is if you're doing a sand finish, you can use a sponge while the plaster is going up to give a coarse texture. And you can use like a sponge, like a, a mason sponge, or a, what they call a green float or a stucco float to achieve a coarse finish. And then as that, uh, the following day, then you would use a sponge compression to close it down. And so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to go and we're going to do a compression of uh, some different finishes with different techniques and give you an idea of what that's like. You ready? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do a sponge compression on a surface that we've already textured ready to show. And the first thing that we want to show is how much is enough water, how much is too little water. So you're going to wring out your sponge, and normally, for most applications, that's going to be enough. With, the, with a rough finish, you want to leave about that much water still in. So you give it a light squeeze, and it's ready to go. So then what we're going to do is we'll take it to the surface, and I want to make sure that I evenly wet that entire surface. So if I have little dry marks that are there, I want to make sure that I get it fully wet. But I don't want to get it too wet. As you can probably see, you might be able to see some areas that are getting kind of lighter in color, some of the areas that are darker in color. If I start getting a lot of light color, I want to wait and let some of that moisture come out and then work a different area. So what I do is I'll keep wetting the surface down here. And then once I get to a certain point, then I'll come back across this area up above. Let's get a little too dry, and go back down, clean it out, bring it out. Okay. Now this time, I've already got some moisture in the surface. So this time I want to make sure that I squeeze a lot more of that water out until there's very little left in. Okay. What I'll do is I'll start pre-wetting some of those other areas. But this has been saturated fairly well. Now I'm going to lightly go back over that surface just make sure you don't have any more loose material that's going to come off the surface. When you're working on a coarse compression or a sponge compression like this on a rough finish, you're going to lose a lot of that loose sand that's going to fall to the ground uh, where you're working. And so you just want to make sure that as you work it, you lightly knock off as you go any of that loose material. If you don't do it in this step, tomorrow you're going to have to come back with a brush and brush it off. So it's just easier to keep going as you go. All right, so now as I've worked across this wall, I've done a lot of this sort of evenly moistened. I'm finishing off some of this compression. If you have some areas that have a little bit of moisture, they're a little bit lighter, you just want to lightly go over those with the sponge, try to get them filled in. But in general, you just want to make sure you get a nice even color. Again, as I come across, I'm checking for any loose material, areas that are a little too dry, and keep working. And that's 
a quick, easy, simple way to do a sponge compression. All right, I wanted to take a moment also and show improper technique when you're using a sponge. It's very easy to either not get enough moisture into the surface or put too much in and think that you did uh, a proper compression when all you did was really move the clay around. And it's distinctly different than the technique that I used prior, but um, uh, I'll, I'll make it pretty obvious on these two panels and then later we can come back and take a look at what those differences are. Uh, the first one is where you don't wring out the sponge enough. Okay? And you get it nice and wet. You got a lot of water. You can see the streaks just sort of develop right away. And there's many times we get a phone call saying, well, I've done sponge compression five times and it's still really dusty and loose on the surface. Most likely, this is what the cause of that was because you leave a lot of moisture on the surface and it's going to leave a lot of loose sand on the surface. Okay? So the other issue is, is when people don't get enough moisture onto the surface when they're sponge compressing and it stays very dry. You don't get a nice even coverage and you're just doing it a little too quickly and you'll end up leaving uh, streaks here and there and it won't be a very even finish. So as you look at this, you've got some areas that aren't even touched and other areas that were worked. Everything isn't done completely and you'll have variations in color across the surface. Okay, so now that we're back, we've let this dry. Uh, I had done this panel correctly with a sponge for a textured finish. This panel I got uh, was too wet and uh, there's some variation and a lot of uh, improper compression. And this one, I didn't even do enough compression on it. And there's some variation that we're looking for. The first one uh, I'm going to talk about is the one that was uh, too wet with improper compression. And the surface looks very similar to the one that was done correctly. However, if I take my fingers and rub across it, it's still quite chalky and loose. And so you can actually see some finger marks. And if you can still see that on your surface, it's not compressed properly. Okay. Uh, on my hand, you'll pick up some light chalking that's pretty wet or light colored a lot of times, and you can tell. If I do the same thing on a properly compressed wall, uh, you shouldn't see any marks done whatsoever, okay? And nothing should come back on, for, on your hands, okay? On this wall, if I do that, it doesn't show anything, but it was compressed properly. I can feel sand coming off right underneath my hand as I rub it. And that is also another indicator that it wasn't compressed properly. If you still have loose sand, it could be two things. One is you didn't get the loose sand off when you were compressing properly. Take a broom and brush it off. Or it wasn't done properly. And one way to tell is it's very subtle, but there's some light and dark sections uh, that are here. Um, the surface looks a little bit open. It uh, looks like it was just done and it wasn't completely wetted. And that's, that's a harder one to tell, but that's one of the indications. To do it properly, for either of these instances, you would have to go back and do the compression the way I'd shown originally, and show it properly. All right, so now we're going to talk about a trowel compression. And we're going to be, going to be utilizing Loma Lina uh, to show this. And we will either use, and it depends primarily on the color, uh, a plastic trowel or polycarbonate trowel or a stainless steel trowel. Because the color that we're utilizing is a gray color, I'm going to be using a stainless steel trowel. If it was a sugar loaf white, for example, I would make sure that I was using a polycarbonate trowel. Now, basically, we've applied this. We did some minor smoothing. I talked about that earlier. Uh, at leather hard, and now we're going to wet and compress the surface. For a small area, I might use just a pump sprayer or a hand sprayer like this. Um, then, if I was doing a larger area, I might use a pump sprayer or a Hudson sprayer uh, like this. Uh, this is going to get more water on the wall a little bit quicker, a lot less work on your wrist, but for this small demo, I'll use a little hand pump sprayer. All right, so now we're going to be working uh, on this 
gray surface to compress it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do half of it uh, correctly and then half of it incorrectly. And then later on we'll take a picture and see the differences between the two. Now the, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly miss or start webbing the entire surface. What this allows it to do is to slowly start taking in that moisture and evenly distribute it throughout the clay. Uh, what a lot of people do is they'll just wet the wall and start trowing right away. You don't get an even moisture uh, throughout the clay surface, and so you just want to start by letting that moisture slowly rest in. And you can see that if I was doing a larger wall, the pump sprayer would work much better. All right, so now that we've allowed a lot of that moisture to rest in, I'm going to get enough moisture on there, enough water on there, that I can actually start moving the plaster. And how I can check and tell is when I look at the bottom of the trowel, I can pick up some clay on that surface, and that's when I know we're getting wet enough. Uh, if I'm picking up a lot of clay, then we get it too wet. got a nice even smoothness to that surface and what's happening is that moisture is coming out I'm coming back across some areas but if you notice this side of the blade was not picking up any more clay at that point you're starting to really compress it you're no longer moving the clay around and you're getting that compression if as you come across and I'll re re-wet this if you are still picking up clay from the wall you're not really compressing you're just moving that surface around. And so you're going to want to let some of that moisture come out and come back across it. If, as I'm wetting that surface, I get it too wet and I start to get drips that are starting to develop, I want to get those before they get too far away. Make sure I keep working that wall. So something else uh, that you can do to kind of feel uh, areas that are a little too wet, a little too sticky, if you've gotten them too wet. It's just very, very lightly run your fingers over it, and you can feel where it's a little wetter because it feels a little bit more rubbery. Uh, areas that are a little bit drier will feel a little bit smoother, a little bit more like a polished stone. Okay? So then, if you've got some areas that are a little bit drier, you can go ahead and keep telling those areas that were still a little bit rubbery feeling, like you can wait until some of that moisture comes out. Once you get a more even surface and it's been evenly troweled, you're not picking up any more uh, clay from the surface. The overall, uh, it's feeling evenly dry, and when you take a trowel across, you're not leaving those white streaks. That's a good indicator that you're uh, pretty much done with that compression. Okay. So now we're going to really wet this side down. Um, it's the call we get often where somebody has said we've compressed the porcelina or lomolina it seems like five times and it's still very chalky and loose. Um, most likely what's happened is the surface was over wet and a lot of moisture was put into the wall. Okay. That was done. Yeah, I'm, I'm really trying to fight that, that moisture on the surface. I'm going to drip away from me or ahead of me. I'm getting a lot on my trowel, creating a lot of that clay slurry. So now as I'm working this, um, every time I come across it, it's starting to get stickier and stickier. Uh, I, maybe I think that there's some areas that I need to smooth a little bit more and I keep adding some water to it try to get it a little bit more even. Okay. What's happening is more and more moisture is getting into that clay. You're not giving it a chance to dry out. And it's getting stickier and stickier. Okay. What you'll start to feel is it'll start to get nice and smooth but it can get sticky enough that the trowel will stick to it if you're not careful. And if you're not 
and you can actually cause it to pull away or delaminate off the surface just from the trowel technique that you just utilized. As you can see here from that stick, I just freaked out, pulled it away, actually pulled the finish off the surface. It was sticky, too wet, and now I have a repair that I have to do. All right, so now a little bit later, we'll come back once these are dry and take a look at the difference between the two and hopefully see if there's a difference between a proper compression and improper. Now we're back at the uh, panels that I had done trowel compression with. Um, I had done a uh, proper section here. Uh, this section here is very modeled, very uh, irregular. I got it fairly wet and used a trowel um, without properly compressing. I moved the material around, but as you can see, it doesn't have the same color value that you have for both of those. Uh, the proper way to, to check also is if I rub my fingers across this section, once again, there's a chalkiness or a whiteness that you can see behind it. If I clean off my fingers and then go across this section, uh, you shouldn't see anything behind your hands as you rub across the wall. Okay? If on your wall you have a little bit, a few areas where you have some discoloration from some cream that's on the surface, uh, what you can do is you can take uh, a damp microfiber cloth uh, and you can go over the surface very lightly where you just uh, work the moisture into the surface and you remove that uh, lightness or that slurry that's on the surface. If your whole wall looks like this, like this panel is, you need to get proper compression first. So you're gonna do the proper technique where you make sure you work the wall and then you continue to work it until no more cream is coming off of your trout. So earlier I talked about uh, using a plastic trowel or a stainless steel trowel and we've got uh, sugarloaf white porcelain here and I'm going to show the difference between compression with the polycarbonate trowel and then the stainless steel trowel. And you'll clearly see a difference between those two surfaces and why it might be beneficial to make sure that you utilize the polycarbonate when you're compressing on a lighter color versus the stainless steel. Or Technique wise I'm going to do some of the same things and make sure that I uh, wet it properly. I'm starting with the plastic trowel. So now that some of that moisture has come back out, I'm making sure that I do real compression. My trowel's coming out clean. Got a nice polished edge and a nice smooth surface. Now, in this other half, I'm going to switch to that stainless steel trowel and basically do the same techniques that I did before. And already, just with those few strokes, you can already see some of that grain starting to develop. Technique-wise, I'm doing the exact same thing, just the difference is the steel's getting polished and left behind. You're literally sharpening the edge of your trowel on the clay. Okay, so already you can see the difference between the plastic and the stainless steel trowel. Obviously, that is an, an extreme example of steel burn on a finish and why you might choose to uh, use a polycarbonate trowel uh, to do the light colors, especially on porcelana, versus the stainless steel trowel. On these panels, yesterday I showed the difference on a lighter color between a steel trowel and a plastic trowel and why you might be interested in, in making sure that you use a plastic trowel. If uh, you weren't expecting this kind of color variation and you use a stainless steel trowel that could be detrimental to the overall look versus the plastic trowel and um, how it's not going to leave that steel uh, swarf behind the finish which actually makes it great. As you see it can be a pretty cool effect if you had planned on getting that effect.
One other thing that I wanted to talk about uh, while we're looking at this panel, this, this especially with the Sugarloaf White, is even after proper compression, uh, there's highs and lows, and it, it's hard to get the entire surface. And if you rub your hand over it and you get some light chalkiness that's going to come off on your fingers, you can use that microfiber cloth once again and just lightly buff out the surface and it will remove that light haze that's causing that chalkiness and fix it. It should be a very quick pass over. Um, you can see that it will pick up some of that cream and that haze that's on the surface and after you're done you shouldn't get any additional chalking on your fingers. All right, great. So thanks for joining us again for the compression videos. If you have any further questions, please give us a call, 866-404-1634.